Hello, everybody. Good to have you back on the program. This is this is a recording uh, that I'm going to be making. Let me let me tell you what I'm thinking about, since that's generally what happens. Um, you've tuned in to figure out what I was thinking about, among other things. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna push back. I'm pushing back against what I received. Um, What's whatever has gone into my brain, I am now uh, saying back out into the world. I'm pushing back against the forces that try to contain me. Too many containing forces that exist. They're all trying to contain you. Everybody's got their own thing. Everybody's like, um, I mean, what are you going to do about something that happens to you? I don't think... Um, I don't really think that you can, you should worry about whatever happened. Like, uh, it doesn't matter that it happened to you. There's nothing that you could do to prevent it, like determinism or um, determinism versus free will. I think rather than determinism, it's kind of like, what are you going to do about the things that did happen? And also you were probably trying, whatever happened, even if something regretful happened to you, you were probably somewhat responsible or you were trying to do something good and then like something bad happened or, or whatever. Um, it was probably going to happen anyway. Like rather than determinism, my thing is, what are you going to do about what already happened? It was probably like, even if it was regretful, then it was probably something for somebody else. It's like, uh, if it was something embarrassing, then it was probably especially, then it was probably good for somebody else. People like to see um, you embarrassed because it makes them feel better about themselves. But um, the I hear oftentimes about don't compare yourself to other people. Just do, just compare yourself to yourself. Like, don't worry about other people. Just uh, worry about yourself. Uh, you should not do that, I don't think. You should compare yourself to other people because, I mean, you're going to do it anyway. Like, you're going to tell me, like, the world is getting by not comparing themselves. I guess some people have a fear of comparison, like a fear of competition, like kind of more uh, liberals or people who are collectivists that think that everybody should be evenly given the same amount of respect or whatever. Like, people probably who are afraid of favor or uh, favoritism. Well, it started started pouring rain since I started doing this. That's interesting. Uh, that's a vibe. Rain, rainy, cloudy, sad, uh, depressing, I, I guess is more with rain, obviously. Well, what, it wouldn't be with sun, obviously. I'm just stating obvious things. But rain can be obvious and visible the same way that sun is, but some people are some people are afraid of comparison and competition um well it's really coming down there's like it sounds like it's a hail or something um that they people tell you to not compare yourself to other people but it's like um well let me tell you what i'm thinking about uh i'm thinking about how Enter entertainment and its relationship to characterization and um like it's entertaining i guess that you are the same name through everything that you do everything that a person does what's consistent through it is the person's name even though you could divide the timeline of a person's life into different categories. You could categorize it any way that you wanted, like, these are the years I lived here in this house, and then these are the years I lived in this house. Uh, there's different timelines that constitute the timeline of your life. Um, like, you could, you could change your name ten times, but the world doesn't tolerate name changes, really. Sometimes people change their name once, and, uh, but like, there's not a lot of people that change their name because that's not really tolerated a lot. And it's especially not tolerated that you would, um, change your name like 10 times. I feel like it's a similar thing to that. It's frowned upon that you would marry seven people. Like, 
uh, the world would prefer that you stuck to one thing. Generally speaking, the world coerces people into being one thing consistently. This goes hand in hand with that. Everybody is given a name and then they, um, and then they follow through with that name for all of their life. And then every action that they do, every job that they have is tied to that name. But like, um, there's a bunch of different timelines that you have that make you, that make up who you are. Like I do stand up comedy. So I have this timeline of me as a comedian that is just like, I went and did comedy this night. And then the next instance of that was the next time I did stand up. And so my timeline is that identity is one of the sub timelines of my life. But it's not, it's not the thing I am the most because the timeline I am the most is the one as my name, but my name is also an identity, uh, the same way that like policeman is an identity, but every job, like I start a new job and then I, if I work there for eight years, all of the instances of my life of me working that job is that timeline as that identity, whatever that title is. Like if I was a, uh, if I was a graphic designer and then I was at that for eight years, then that identity I am for eight years. But like, that's, that's a timeline. If I, I'm, I cook meals. So me as a cook is a different timeline than all the other timelines. Me as these different identities, one of them is a cook or like, as I'm learning to cook and developing that skill and like, uh, more can stand behind the authority of that identity. Um, I'm developing the timeline and becoming that, but as, the point that I'm making is that there isn't one timeline. There's a bunch of sub timelines. Um, yes, there isn't one timeline. There is a bunch of sub timelines, but it's like, um, it's kind of like what I was saying last time about contexts is that ultimately there's like infinite context in the same way that there's infinite points of time that you could be recognizing over the spectrum that is your life, um, that you recognize a time or an event. This is like, you're setting aside an event that you're recognizing or that other people are recognizing you're doing. Um, people take cognizance of you at some event or you go and visit people. So they have the opportunity to judge you in some way or take recognition of you. This is like, this is potentially a different name or a different judgment is a different point in time because you exist at all these different points in time. Potentially you could be judged at like, I mean, depending on the unit of time that you're considering, it could be like milliseconds. Like you go to the millisecond level, you, you recognize how many possible instances you are, but like a context that you are is, um, a context that you are is any, any could just be the way that somebody else sees you. Basically, everybody is going to see you slightly differently because they've built different language. To, they've built their language on different foundations in order to describe the world around them because any one word that they've come to understand is res, the result of a collection of many different images specific to that person that that person has integrated in order to fully explain that word to them. And then it's like the more images that you collect of a word is the deeper your perception of it. The more that you have authority over it is the more, and the more that you've experienced it, the more that you have like true knowledge or true wisdom of something. It's kind of depends on how much data you've collected, how many images instances that you've collected of something. But, um, it's like the, the potential data of you as a person is like consists of, uh, tons of different contexts, but the world wants you to be one context. Generally speaking, they try to, um, they try to hold you to you as an I like that you're responsible for all the things that you do as just one person, or they try to make it so that you're one narrative rather than a collection of many different timelines, many different narratives or identities, um, that you could be. But I guess what I'm interested in right now is like, uh, character and then how that is entertaining. Since entertainment is a word for holding an environment together, like, um, 
like th like the way that the gladiator in the movie gladiator entertained the environment the, he's like the best entertainer and then uh sort of what that movie is speaking to is how the crowd the population like of rome um votes on because like rome is notoriously democratic or like you know that we know that it's a democracy like the people vote on the most entertaining person and so part of what's spoken in that movie is the dynamic between an entertainer like a celebrity like uh russell crowe is an athlete versus joaquin phoenix is the elected official who by name is the uh political person that they voted in or is like they by name, he is the most entertaining, or he's like the leader that's supposed to be holding up the environment. But Russell Crowe comes along, and he's a challenger because he's actually, a, he's actually like a more dominant entertainer. But it's like the population decides that the population decides what entertains the environment the best, and then they they vote for that the most. And so, like firsthand, you see that in that movie where they're voting for Russell Crowe. Or like so much that they get the emperor to give him a thumbs up rather than decide to kill him or something but um it's uh entertainment but it's like uh the kardashians and um how the empire that they built and arguably they're like past their prime at this point probably like uh kanye divorces kim that's that's a uh, picture of the re relevance of the kardashians it's like uh these Con kanye and kim are people that are both always trying to be as relevant as possible um so i mean either 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 one of them are probably both past their peak but they get married because but uh like the kardashians make it really big m because of their show and their show basically just portrays them in all of these in a lot of scripted scenarios like scene by scene each scene is kind of scripted i haven't really seen very much of the show but this is what i this is what i gather about it is that like the the show is portraying real events in their life it's just that it's in, it they embellish it a little bit for tv they make the real event more scripted and, or uh, to varying degrees. I don't really know the trajectory of the show, like if it started out more realistic and then got more fake and more scripted over time, or if it's the opposite. But um, what's interesting about the Kardashians is the entertainment value for some reason, and I would argue that there's something kind of genius about what the Kardashians do, and it has something to do with like pretending to be a celebrity and um like they are well connected to celebrity culture bef before their show started but before their show started they're basically not really known to the public but um what's amazing is how much of celebrities they became just by pretending to be celebrities but it's kind of like the idea of that is really interesting when you think about it like if you were a regular person and um pretended to be a celebrity like if you got an entourage to hang out with you or like you roll up in a limo and then your entourage like uh rolls out a red carpet for you or like a big deal is made of you entering a place if that happened for you when you were in actuality a regular person and not famous at all then it's almost like you are a celebrity even though you aren't but like the I, i'm talking about um pretending to be a celebrity is kind of what is kind of like the deeper level of entertainment that the Kardashians are tapping into because they get famous just for being famous but like ultimately they're kind of criticizing the idea of celebrity by becoming celebrities for not being it at all but they're 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 criticizing like they're kind of pulling the they're kind of showing you a few layers deeper about what it would mean to be famous by being by showing you like portraying real events in the regular lives of famous people that like at a time when celebrities aren't showing you what happens in their real life and the Kardashians show you what's happening in their real life. But like, but more so than that, they're always walking around like assuming that they're famous even from the beginning when they aren't, but like acting like, well, of course we're famous. And of course you want to see our regular lives, but it's like they become big celebrities in the process 
when they didn't start off as that, but it was like they were celebrities the whole time, but it, it's like risky to start doing that because they started off by just pretending to be famous. Um, but it's just kind of like makes fun of celebrities ultimately, but there's a lot of fakeness involved in that. Like, uh, it's false, but what's weird is that all of the falseness of that is known to the public the entire time, but the public still votes it uh, higher because it is, uh, it's relatively more entertaining for some reason, too. It's kind of like uh, fakeness that everybody is involved in, that everybody gets to see. Everybody knows that they're not actually famous, but everybody gets to participate in, like, making them famous. And, um... It's, it has to do with entertainment, but it's interesting how much falseness can be involved in entertainment or like that it would go in that direction when you'd think that that should be the most unlikable thing is someone pretending to be a celebrity who isn't. Um, but in this case, it's like they create an environment of falseness just with the way that they're living and then like the scripted scene by scene of their shows and then like everything that results after that they become like influencers on social media or whatever um like they create this environment of falseness that is fun to participate in but contrast that with elizabeth holmes the fake ceo who start with behind theranos the fake company that is like running like came up with the blood test experiment machine that is supposed to threaten the uh, mega industries that already own patents on blood testing or whatever. Uh, Theranos, Elizabeth Holmes, the CEO, created this company that came to be valued at $9 billion, but was based on a fraud the entire time. It's kind of a lot like Enron, where Enron became this giant inflated company and worth all this money. And but in reality, it wasn't worth any money because it was all just based on a scam. But like Enron looked like any other company and like had a skyscraper in Houston, like any other company. And uh, but it's just like a facade. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like the con. Uh, it's a it's a con no matter what. But some of them have a more accelerated time time frame but it's like with elizabeth holmes uh she creates an environment of falseness but the joke actually is on her but with the kardashians the falseness um is a joke that the kardashians are playing on the public ultimately and so it like works out for them but uh it's like i'd say that these are kind of similar things because elizabeth holmes also becomes a celebrity where in actuality she had no right to be one because she wasn't, she didn't do, she didn't follow the rules the same way other people did to make a company that's worth $9 billion. She, uh, it was like a scam the entire time. She got it by lying to investors for years and years. And, um, like, what's interesting is how entertaining Elizabeth Holmes is. I just watched the Hulu, uh, dramatization of it, The Dropout, where Amanda Seyfried is, plays Elizabeth Holmes. There's, like, it's only three episodes long. I'm guessing maybe in the future they'll make more seasons of it, but it's like three episodes long. It's about Elizabeth Holmes. Amanda Seyfried plays her. And uh, it's a very entertaining story because of she just made this fake story and she was lying to everybody. And it's like, in the end, she becomes this very unlikable person and to the point that her actions are so unlikable that Amanda Seyfried can put in like a ruthless performance making fun of her ultimately like uh amanda seyfried kind of plays her as this like social pariah kind of an idiot or like that's the way that this show on hulu dramatizes it which is a dramatization of a real real events but we don't know anything about elizabeth holmes like how she actually acted in these situations and so this this show the dropout portrays this for you but basically the show can portray her to be the biggest idiot possible because th that's all that anybody knows about it it's like we don't care if amanda seyfried uh criticizes her with the way she's acting her as um because really yeah be as ruthless as possible but it's like uh the way that she pretends to be her the way that she acts is 
really entertaining, but it's already very entertaining subject matter. Um, but it's like, it, it, uh, I'd say that this is an interesting show, even if it doesn't, ex like, you wouldn't know if it exactly portrayed Elizabeth Holmes the right way, but it's an interesting show because they are now able to make this character that's like, um, how would somebody act in their personal life if they're a, if there's somebody who is that much of a fraud that they created nine billion dollars worth of fraudulence around themselves like she single-handedly did this so she's actually a transcendent figure and it's a very interesting story and she's very entertaining even though she's very unlikable um and um they're able to make this character and uh like amanda seafried portrays her this like ruthlessly i'd say and it's it's entertaining and like she went in the right direction in doing that like it's a great performance as somebody that you don't that you would say is really fraudulent but um i'm uh what i'm saying is like i'm trying to think about the relationship between entertainment and your character because there's like your name and um your name is what entertains the environment that is yourself. If you were to consider yourself to be an enterprise that exists alongside whole companies or even religions, like you consider that everything is one thing, like the level of the individual, that everything, any corporation is ultimately just one entity under one title. And then like, there's also you and, um, there's like whatever consistently entertains the environment as you is kind of like your name because that is always what you are but it's like you're uh it's a character and it's weird that in the world um it's weird that in the world we reduce your potential to one person but i would argue it's like you're they make you play a role and it's because of a world that's um, you're trying to make money, and so there needs to be some, but there needs to be a name to sign on the dotted line for every job that you start that can be tied to every identity that you take part in. There has to be a name for that. It has to do with the uh, financial situation of the world, I would say, is the reason why we make sure that everybody is one name their entire life. But I have a problem with this because the the characterization of it um it's it's more like you have the potential to be many different names because i would i would argue you also exist as tons of different contexts like you exist as every context that you're in but if you're going in that direction of saying that that is true you're saying that you as a person are more like nothing rather than that you're everything or you're taking the time to divide if you're considering yourself to not so much be the one thing that is yourself but rather all of the context that you appear in all of the judgments that people make of you because when a new person sees you they see you a different way so it's like you're a different person to them like as far as you exist in the world through somebody else's eyes they can create in their imagination this whole persona of what they think you are which isn't exactly true but i'm saying that you as a per you as a person as described by everybody else is pretty subjective uh subjectively people have different interpretations of you and then if you were to collect all of these interpretations how could you say which one you actually were when all these different people would come up with different character traits to describe you like truthfully there is there is would generally be something consistent about the way people describe you but there is they're going to come come up with at least slightly different characterizations and language in it in itself is limited to a finite number of words there's only a finite number of ways that somebody can describe you they're like they're just coded points of reference there is very many de deviations that could potentially exist to describe you that would also be true, but we don't even have the words to describe you. I'm saying if you were to collect all of the possible interpretations of yourself, there would be no, there's nothing that's actually true. 
but it's like the same thing as saying you appear in all these different contexts, but it kind of depends on how deep you want to go in describing yourself or in saying that you're nothing rather than that you're everything or saying that you or your existence is non-existent rather than that it is existent. But it's like, um, like you're sort of like, you're sort of like nothing, but the world, the world wants you to be everything or generally because we base everything off of what we see or what is evident rather than what we don't see, or we're going to spend more time describing the objects in the room rather than the space in the room. With the space, you don't see it, but yet it is still composed of all of these tiny disintegrated particles or like electrons or pieces of dust that you don't see. Like when you look across a room, you just see the objects, but it's actually that there's all this disintegrated space and then the objects are integrated, but this is this is how you exist. You could kind of view it on either side of the spectrum, but you would be more inclined to visiting yourself as disintegrated if you're just considering that you are you are the collection of all the possible judgments of yourself or from other people's perspective, but even from your own perspective. When you appear in different contexts, you you become different people or like you are different characters. It's just that the world doesn't emphasize this in you. It doesn't hold you to this. It holds you to that you're one character. So like what I'm saying sounds more uh, crazy. It's, it's definitely more off the radar to say that you're all these different ones, but you're all the different points in time that you're doing different events because time itself is always different. That's what's true about time because you're going, you're living through time and times are always different. Um, but like, the you can view yourself as disintegrated or or integrated like it's just that the integrated part is more characterized it has more to do with the character but like that we live in this world where they give you a name that you have to be this name for every day of your life they're holding you to one character and then you're limited to play one character but i'm saying that you call, you can call it a character you recognize it to be that more when you see that you're actually acting in a lot of different ways based on the different groups, group of people that you're around because in some senses you're trying to entertain them or appeal to them. And like we, it's uh, inevitable you recognize that different people have different interests and you're going to tailor your speech differently to different people to appeal to them. Uh, you act in different ways. You put on different characters temporarily for different environments. Every Everything is very temporary if you want to divvy it up that way if you want to divide your life into many different sections or different timelines rather than say it's just the one timeline but the world is like you can only operate off of what is evident but what i'm saying is that what is evident is kind of a myth because it's subjective there's what is evident to one person about you will be differently evident to a different person and um but the world is like you're all you're all one thing. I'd say that some of it has to do with um, some of it has to do with Jesus and the fashion of that. I would say the fashion of Jesus because Jesus has a name and the timeline of that is always in season. Um, like the fashion of Jesus, Jesus is always in season to the point that you wouldn't go wrong staking your reputation or identity in Jesus or becoming a Christian because you've seen that it has consistently been relevant for the last 2,000 years. Um, Jesus is always in season, but this says something about fashion itself. It's like it's always, it's always been fashionable, but it's so fashionable for so long that it actually dictates a lot about fashion itself. But I would argue that that we give somebody a name and then expect them to have one name with one timeline their whole life, I think is somewhat in the fashion of this, of the Jesus world we live in because the majority of people perceive it that we are, time is uh, on Jesus's timeline because, um, because we think that he's still alive. So we're still counting his years or, or something like that. I mean, but regardless, we're on, it's all on Jesus's time. And um, I think that when we name somebody, expect them to have one narration that we're like, this is your one timeline, your one name. I think that some of that it has is influenced by 
the culture of Jesus, that Jesus is under this one name, but uh, partially what I'm saying is the character of Jesus is the best one ever. Like, what a character. He's a great character. Um, yeah. How do you beat the character of Jesus? But that's, uh, that's such a character that you that you make money off of and or like uh that people make money off of but it's kind of like the world and its current structure is dependent on financial inequality and authoritarianism in other words different authorities like that you have been for different lengths of time get you varying salaries like if you went to law school for eight years then you can get this salary as the title being a, as the title of a lawyer because you've devoted you've specialized yourself in that area you've devoted time to one specific area and so you have built within yourself this authority that you get to purvey to other people and other people believe you for that because of the the authority um gets you the specific authority will get you a specific amount of money and this is what financial inequality is, um, is uh, different different financial statuses based on different authorities, and the world runs on this, different titles, but even different names. One name to another, those are different characters um, that, I mean, that ultimately produce varying sums of money, like Elon Musk as a character just so happens to produce lots of money or is like very current. And so um, like the the character-ish world like that we expect you to be one name, I'd say has something, it's just that like you're gonna, you're gonna make more money as a character consistently or like as the same thing, like that's what an identity is, that's what a job title is, is like you're the character, uh, an electrician and uh, you're gonna make a certain amount of money as that, that's, that's the whole title culture. But also the thing that you're gonna make the most money as is your own name because more so than any one job that you, like if you collect $200,000 over a number of years as an electrician, then you switch jobs, collect $100,000 as your next job. Uh, the total sum of money that you collect is like the most money that you're going to get that's attributed to the title that is your name you as your name is what collects the most money and it's has to do with that that is what you are the longest and the authority that is most respected about you um and so like that consistently over time gets you more identities and more uh sums of money but like uh I guess I'm kind of wondering what, like, uh, relationship between entertainment and entertainment and relevance. It's like you can, what, like the Kardashians end up making lots of money, or like they're really relevant, or like what makes you the most relevant uh, has something to do with um, being really being deep and also returning to the surface often like relevance is a word for re levitating or re coming back to the circle at the the top re coming back uh up again going back up again so it's like going down so it infers that you're going down also you're going down and coming back up so like as a person people live at varying depths of character and they share this in different ways, but it's like, what's going to make you really relevant, I think, is being, being deep, um, and being, uh, prolific, so that you re-levitate a, a lot of times, like having a high frequency of appearances, or being prolific, like making a lot of content or something, or appearing a lot, or being very visible, it makes you more popular, but it's like, you'll you'll be more visible and more popular you'll make more appearances if you uh trust yourself more to go out there it's like you the more content that you share is the more opportunities that you have to make money off of that content but i'm making the argument that content is 
anytime you're saying anything, any really any appearance that anybody makes is content because uh, they're all like performances because and they're they're performances because whoever you're seeing and talking to, you're only seeing and talking to that specific person for like a small percentage ultimately of your life to different different degrees, different people you see the most you see for higher or lower percentages of your life, but like um like you um as a character you uh you speak certain words and people see those words and then like you're they're like you go and talk to people and then you tailor your speech to them they're different performances but you kind of like the more that you appear as a character is the more that people um i mean the more that you're seen but i would say that the more that you're seen or the more that your surface is the more that you surface is kind of like the more relevant that you are but I, kind of what i'm talking about is like uh, like polarity, um, where polarity is going both up and down. I'd say that this is kind of like relevance or like, like polarization makes you relevant. And it has to do with appearing a certain way to lots of people or m having a lot of appearances. But like, if you are reflected to lots of different people, this speaks to your popularity, but you're going to be limited in your ability to do that because like different people have different abilities to share themselves or meme themselves dependent on their inerrant memorability um or like ability to be popular but it has to do with like how many interpretations you're able to generate of yourself that lots of people will see you this will determine your currency or your relevance so, like how many times you resurface um how many times you resurface or how many times you're and it, like it has to do with has to do with uh polarity or polarization but it's like um it would speak to that since you're you're being polarizing like in order to be relevant you have to go back down you have to go through the whole cycle you have to go up and down a lot of times um like uh it has uh, it speaks to that entertainment can mean that you're also a pariah and there's there's this movie that uh that was made by greg turkington if you know greg turkington then you're pretty deep into uh comedy you're a pretty big comedy fan greg turkington does a show with Tim Heidecker called On Cinema at the Cinema. That's probably what he's best known for. It's like this Adult Swim web series generally, but I think it aired on Adult Swim, but like Tim Heidecker from Tim and Eric does this show with a guy called a guy named Greg Turkington, but um Greg Turkington is a stand-up comedian and he plays this character whenever he's on stage, he plays the same character named Neil Hamburger and Neil Hamburger is just like this unlikable guy who kind of has like fundamentalist values but he just kind of sounds like an old man but he's not even a Christian so he's like unlikable in every way um so he's like he always thinks everybody is a whore for dressing slutty or whatever just like these uh, ancient kind of values that like everybody agrees is not likable. He plays this really unlikable character, but he's clowning on the audience because he's pretending to be unlikable. That's his act as a stand-up comedian. But then he went and made this movie called Entertainment about him as this character. Um, and they don't mention in the movie that the character is named Neil Hamburger because in the movie, they just portray his on-stage persona as the protagonist as if he is um just a guy that actually exists as the unlikable character rather than it's like greg turkington playing him but like greg turkington playing him in real life when he actually does stand up makes makes it enjoyable but in this movie greg turkington plays him from the perspective of like an audience member who hates him or doesn't understand the act or thinks that he is actually unlikable and so like 
he plays this entire movie as like the most unlikable guy possible. He goes and does stand up and nobody likes him. Like he's completely unself aware and always makes uh makes the audience uncomfortable and like hates on the audience. Like it's a really ugly movie. Um I don't know if that's if there's a better way to describe it. Like it's an ugly movie. He the like Greg Turkington portrays himself as very ugly. Like he lives this terrible life where he's in shitty motels on the road doing shitty stand-up gigs at bars that don't even like him he's like making no money and he basically collapses in on himself due to self-pity over the course of the movie like it it gets worse and worse it's like very ugly um and the movie is called entertainment but the point is that um the point is that he's it's actually very entertaining to watch somebody collapse in on themselves like it's like really embarrassing it's entertaining because everybody in the surrounding audience can agree that this guy sucks that he does that he doesn't know what he's doing like everybody is united in deciding that this guy sucks but like that is also entertainment um in the same way that elizabeth holmes is entertaining um like it upholds an environment like it's entertaining it's entertaining to be that be be like that um for some reason to be completely unlikable because it it holds the environment together because entertainment it, entertainment is a word for like interconnectedness inter maintaining of an environment um as upheld by like an individual person or group of people so like um that's what entertainers do or what comedians do is they they uphold the environment but it's like why would that be worse than making people laugh if the value is just entertainment so i wonder if the world maybe goes in a direction of memorability is important no matter what so it's actually uh it's actually just as interesting to be very ugly or, or something like that. Um, but I guess the point that I'm making is, I'm just kind of like thinking about, thinking about that, like polarity, that you, that you surface as the character and then um, like the name that you are, it's the character that you play every time. It doesn't have to be like that, but uh, they're, the world is a spaceship and um people are spaceships they're like vessels they're like vehicles but literally because most of the earth is composed of space or disintegrated what you would refer to as disintegrated but the earth is traveling through space at high speeds it's a ship it's a spaceship literally because it's composed of space but people are also that because they're just made of matter and like atoms are primarily made of space and so people are just vessels they're just um they're spaceships any integrated object is a spaceship it's a medium it's a vessel that is like temporarily holding together all of this matter in a specific way that is specific to its title or whatever it was made in the form of and um the formation dictates something about its value uh monetarily and like different things like a set of golf clubs is worth more than a coffee mug but these are different different values different titles different statuses are offered different values like for in terms of money and it's it's based on the title but it's like based on it's based on the character and um it's kind of like how a character is a letter um so how a character is a letter but think of all of the collection of all things that we're calling characters like chinese symbols are characters numbers are characters letters are characters hieroglyphics are characters all of those things are characters but really you can extend it to every waking thing in the known world every integrated thing like a is the character in that way where it's like this symbol that stands for something like a like a piano is a character because 
it has character. It has characteristics. It's a, it's a specific thing. Um, but it's like uh, how characters are text, but then text appears in context that they're, they're like text. Different people are different symbols and represent different things to people. And like what the, what I am as a person, it generates all of these possible interpretations, um, of myself. But like, I am like, I am like text and then that text is integrated of many different contexts. But like uh, the, the, the character, characters like text and text appears on a page or it appears somewhere. Um, but they're like, it's like a different, I'm, I'm symbolically the thing where it's like when it gets down to the symbol, I guess it's kind of as deep as you can go. But, uh, and that's what a character is. And so it's like the things that we just say are characters. Like you wouldn't typically call it, you wouldn't typically call a blender a character, but uh, we call letters characters because they're more fundamental. Um, they're, they're more, they're more like fundamental or like they're, you can't go anywhere without mentioning them. Like the symbol of them is too powerful. Like they're, they're, entertaining they're integrate like they appear in too many things like the letter b we call it a character because it appears in too many things or it's like and in that sense it's entertaining because of its consistency across many different contexts because the letter b appears in so many more things um than other things that you would call a, a character like the characters are more the things that we actually call characters are more fundamental I guess is the point that I'm making, but, um, like, kind of like that about, it's like, it's like polarizing, but it's based on, it's based on appearances is what's going to make you relevant, but we, the world bases itself on what it sees or what it says is evident, but it's like the earth um, the earth is actually made of space and it just depends on how deep you want to go in describing it. If you really want to go very deep, like the perception of the earth, if you want to go to the level of the atoms of it, like you really want to go deep in describing what the earth is, you recognize that it's just made of matter and matter is just like atoms that it's just like, it's generally just made of space rather than that this, it's this integrated thing, but it exists as both of them. It's just that there's like all of these levels of perception of the earth and you can go in the direction of describing it as disintegrated. If you consider that the earth is just composed of all of these disintegrated atoms, ultimately disintegrated matter, or you can describe it as integrated. It's actually both of them, but the spectrum of integrated to disintegrated that the earth exists as it's all of those. It's all of those at one time, but it's also any one person is the same because a person, is also just a bunch of particles and it's just a bunch of space at the end of the day. It depends on your perspective and or how deep you want to go. If you want to go really deep in terms of perception, where it's like the more you know, the more that you're able to specify like microscopically more and more so about what's actually going on, that's the more disintegrated that things become, like the more specific you're willing to go or like the more intelligent you're, that you're willing to go rather than uh, dumber rather than what appears just on the surface like the earth is actually just space and uh, in some senses it's just waiting to be described as only space but the way that we exist now ties everything to one thing or like we're one world the world is we would only see it as like okay the world is this one thing or a person is one thing but um like if you want to, if you really want to consider all of the possible contexts, then you're considering something like all of the different perceptions or different interpretations that can be said about something at one time, because even, even just at one time, there's like infinite ways of describing the earth based on what, what level of perception you're going to arrive at to describe it. You could say it's one thing. You could say that people are from the earth and are part of it, or you could separate it into like two things or say that because you could, 
you could disintegrate all of the matter that composes all of the people on the earth and then combine it into one giant ball and like that ball is comparative to the matter that is on the earth and like the ball of all of the matter that you rolled into from like all the people that was generated by the earth like the like all of the trees on earth is like matter that's generated as a result of there being an earth but you could rearrange all of the matter that is on the earth and that the earth has generated across people and animals and objects and whatever you can rearrange all of that matter into whatever category categorizing that you want uh different perceptions it's just even as the earth exists right now in this moment, there's infinite perceptions, ways of describing it. And, and besides that, different people, and different people have different levels of perception of it. Like not everybody knows that you could describe all of it as atoms, but some people know that. And then they know even further than that, or to the point that they might even describe it to themselves as that. Like you might, your perception of the way that the earth is just collective of atoms is um, you could, you could actually believe that so much that that's actually the way that you see it or then you're seeing the earth not as one thing but as many different things but it's like saying the deeper that you go is the more context you're going to recognize or the more that you're going to say that things are dis disintegrated as opposed to integrated but it's like uh, what i'm talking about is characteristically a dead versus characteristically alive where dead corresponds to disintegrated alive corresponds to integrated and the dynamic of these two things you would see this like there's a cycle that's happening all the time with the earth where the earth is one thing it's the earth based on that's our categorization of that as one thing but it's also like a collection of infinite all like nearly infinite uh disintegrated particles it's like all of these very many different things also and their their contexts or their like their perspectives because technically speaking every atom has at a, in a different location has, has something like a different perspective but a more practical way of describing this is like all of the people on earth have a different perspective of the earth where all of the people are ultimately separated and not integrated with each other um but like I'm saying that the, um, there's like, you, it, it's, uh, uh, I forgot what I just in the last moment was starting to describe about it, but there's like all the, there's all these different descriptions. It's kind of like, um, has to do with what's being, what's being reflected about the earth that people de see it different ways, but like, um, um, so it's like the deeper you go is the more context that you would have, the more that, oh, characteristically dead versus characteristically alive, like, um, dead is disintegrated, but I'm talking about like changing versus staying the same. These are characteristics that go along with death versus living. Death is more changing Living is more staying the same. Living has to do with staying within the same environment. Death has to do with transcending the borders of the environment that you're in. Because the more that you are for overcoming the rules of whatever you're saying are the rules for your life, you're like you can't do these things, the more that you're just going past the things that you're saying you can't do or that the world is saying that you can't do is the more context that you're going to recognize is the more that you're going more that you're going to change the more worlds that you will enter into but it's like seeing the world as many different worlds involves recognizing it to just be made of space or uh but it's like if you're going to recognize the earth as space you're just seeing it as dead rather than alive but what's interesting is that it is both dead and alive at the same time when you see that if you're just going to say it's all these disintegrated things, then it isn't anything, it's nothing. But in the other direction, it's one thing, it's everything. But that's like saying 0% to 100%, 0 to 1. 0% uh, nothing is disintegrated, 100% in the integrated thing. But that's it's just wave-particle duality, uh, where the particle is one thing, the wave is 
wave goes in the direction of nothing because the wave as opposed to the particle describes a wave of probability or um, a set of possible outcomes that could happen but that have not yet materialized. So the way that something exists as a wave, it has not materialized as a single thing. And so it just exists non-existently as a vapor or something like probability. Probability isn't real. It describes things that haven't materialized. But uh, a particle is a particle is integrated Particle is one integrated thing, and that's the other direction. That's like that's like alive in the same way that it's observable or or evident, and it's more obvious. And that's what surfaces. It's more characteristically speaking, the things that surface or the things that are obvious or the, or evident are more one thing. And that is the way that the world exists now. Is they tie you to one thing um, in a similar way to that. They expect you to live with one name the entire time, or we we talk about each other in terms of their identities or like the one thing that they are, rather than that you're going to complicate things or recognize deeper levels of perception about a person or recognize more complexity in a person. Um, to say that the world makes it so that it's one thing more because, uh, I, I mean, not that there aren't people explaining the world to themselves in in more complex levels but like dead dead versus alive like dead is um it's just it's just space but it, i the point that i'm making is like you go and you go deeper into your mind and in that way recognize that your thing is an act that like well you go you can go deeper and then um in that way you're recognizing yourself to be more than one thing uh than the thing that you previously were or what you were for a group of people or what you've been to this point uh you can go deeper and then in that way you are criticizing you're foregoing recognizing what you were as one thing or like certain single things that people have seen you as because you go further down you generate more like if you choose you can continue to choose to see yourself as all these different things it's kind of more characteristically dead or seeing yourself as disintegrated or if you're gonna like think of yourself as every single instant i'm somebody different because that's what time allows me the opportunity to be like if you do that then you're gonna be more successful at forgetting your past or whatever, like embracing it and saying, well, my past isn't who I was. If you're saying that you are a different person every moment or seeing yourself as a collection of contexts, then um, it's like seeing, saying, looking at yourself and saying that I am an ever-changing thing instead of the same thing every time. But it's like you, you are both of them. But is there like, the world would not tell you that it is okay to see yourself as dead or just that you are space but that's what i'm saying is that like you go in the direction of saying that you're all these different contexts and um then you're saying that you're false or like a pre pretender at any one time because you're not that you go in that direction then you're saying that you're nothing but it's like saying that you're nothing i would argue is maybe better or more beneficial for the world um, because it, it goes in the opposite direction of saying that you're a single character. You should see yourself as many different characters, but that can go on infinitely, like depending on how, how much you want to think that you are something more or something different. And that depends on how many ways you come up with to describe yourself or if you keep going, keep going deeper. But, um, like... I'm I'm saying that the like that you're nothing and um this is like a way of looking at it but if you go in the direction of saying that you're everything like not that you're the context but that you are something more like the one name that the world has given to you that which is which is I'm saying that's why the way that's why the world sees it that way is they say everybody is one name and they reduce everybody to one timeline the second they're out of the womb when it's like um it reduces your potentiality from the moment you're a baby 
where cognitively you have the potential to be all these different characters, but the world emphasizes and holds you to one of them. And in that way, I'd say reduces your brain function because now you have to play the same thing over it forever and ever. And obviously the world isn't about to change out of this. It's like, they're not going to be like, oh, this name thing is a problem. Like this will, con this will continue for a long time. It has to do with the state of money in the world where y y financial inequality and you're expected to make money. Um, you can only do that by having an integrated set of information that you're standing behind. And you can only do that if you're a person. Like, for example, me talking on this podcast is like, um, I'm saying that I'm not, if I was really going to go so far as to be like, I'm all these different contexts, then it's kind of more like I'm nothing or all of the information that I have, it's already everybody else's because I am one with everything or like that I have this other different perspective is dependent on the current world that we live in where you can, um, in some senses, temporarily collect all this information, sell yourself to be a character that is different than other characters, sell people on that you have value and significance uh, outside of what they are. It, it has to do with money or status or currency or relevance, like, um, and it's, it's dependent on you. You making money is dependent on your ability to sell yourself as a character. It can just be that you're a, it can just be that you're a wedding planner and that's your, that's a character that you have to sell people on. And if you're a good wedding planner, that means you're good at being that character. And it has to do with money. It has that you, people need to be characters and um like i don't the information i'm giving to you is actually already there or in some senses everybody else already knows it but it is also true that i have a different perspective i have integrated the information differently than everybody else based on my position and my point of reference ha has made it so that i integrated it differently and then I share it and I um but and so then there is value in me sharing it because it's different but it's like if the world actually saw everything more as that everybody was nothing or like everybody's kind of like the same as everybody else then there wouldn't be this about you th you thinking that there's value in me as a character but it, like so it has to do I'm talking about a withholding of information which is always the root of people making money about something. And like, uh, that's because the world, some of it has to do with the, uh, like I'm talking about how cryptocurrency is transcendent enough function that it would make money ubiquitous in the way that the internet made information ubiquitous. And if like people that are always criticizing money and rich people, what they should think about doing is investing in cryptocurrency because this will make money ubiquitous it will raise impoverished impoverished countries in africa and individual members of these countries like the populace in countries in africa will be raised to a much higher level financially like they'll be much closer to whatever oligarchs are ruling them like it will defeat classism relatively so because it'll make money given everybody the same way that information, the same way that in Africa, you can now get a smartphone and you have access to all this information that like all these rich people in America have, where it used to be that information was, uh, holed up in universities or, uh, wisdom. Like there are a lot more barriers to entry for information, but now Africa jumps up all of these levels just because of the transcendence of the technology of the internet. And uh, cryptocurrency is money internet and would also do that, but for money, it would make the world relatively less financially unequal. Um, but like uh, part of the thing, I feel like that people who criticize money wouldn't invest in cryptocurrency though, because they're they're relying on the safety of it, of the current environment, which and the current environment is dependent on financial inequality. But like 
because of fear of money where people who don't have money don't know what's on the other side of having it and so they don't trust the rich they don't have experience doing that so they don't trust that group of people um and um so sort of like adherence to the safety of an environment is characteristically alive as opposed to um dead and so it's characters and then there are uh there are not that and those are some of the things that i was thinking about let me just uh think about the i like the dead versus alive dynamic let me just speak to that one last minute um dead is it's just like that if you divide yourself very many times that is when you see yourself as many different contexts for any different divisions is, or many different separations the same way that something that is disintegrated is you're describing something that is separated or divided in many different ways and so the more worlds that you transcend into based on like you break the rules of one environment you go outside of the borders of what you're in and then you go into new sets of borders that are constantly changing this is this speaks to your ability to recognize very many different divisions or separations that you yourself view on your way up or whatever like so then you become consistent through all of them and um so it's like there's entertainment and entertainment can entertain the entire culture or an entire country so like a country has its celebrities and entertainers but then um you as an entertainer um um i don't know maybe it's like maybe it's like entertainment itself is kind of goes along with the world that we're in right now where when you're one character one person through all of it um like maybe we rely on each other to be entertainers or something um but it's different money goes to people who are relatively better at entertaining the same way that if you're a good wedding planner, you probably relatively make more money than a bad wedding planner, but it speaks to your ability to be entertaining as a character or hold the environment together as that. Um, but like you're dead, for, but that's dead is more divisions and separations or seeing yourself as changing all the time. Alive is, I would say. Um, and so like, I, I don't know what I'm, I'm arguing for for some reason I'm saying like see yourself as dead which is not popular and it isn't because well I I don't know is it I guess I like to go until I find some contradiction that I can't explain this is like dead um that is not as entertaining because it's not integrated an integrated environment or a safe one is one that's continually held together and for people that are maintaining the group and choosing to stay within it and stay loyal to it and not break the borders of it that's entertaining integrated is entertaining disintegrated is dead and i would say characteristically more unpopular because we we don't know what you are if you're always changing if you're like really going to see yourself as all the divisions so it speaks to branding, maybe. We know what you are. You have a better brand. You're more integrated. It's a safer environment for people to take part in. Uh, it's more consistent rather than ever changing. But um, thanks for listening to that and talk to you all later.